A slightly out there title is 1987's Crystal Quest. There's a reasonably good chance you've never played it. Originally on the Apple Mac and Apple II GS, it was notable for its fast-paced gameplay and for being the first game to utilize the Macintosh 2's color displays. You control this little circle spaceship, and in each wave, you have to collect all the crystals in the playfield, a single screen area, after which a doorway at the bottom will open for you to fly through. Attempting to thwart your efforts are constantly spawning aliens from portals on either side of the screen. These are relentless in their approaches and appear quickly without notice. You can shoot at them with your gunship's infinite ammo, or activate one of your smart bombs to clear out all visible enemies and projectiles. As well as the small crystals, there are larger ones that give you tons of points, as well as extra lives and smart bombs to replenish your stocks. These are optional, but plentiful, and quite necessary should you want to get far into the game. The initial difficulty you'll have is getting accustomed to the movement of your craft. The original titles were mouse-driven and heavily inertia-based. This was retained as much as was possible with the D-pad, and as a result, what you contend with is a very slippery, almost ice physics-y movement. It's fast, too. Hitting anything is instant death, as you would imagine, with no real cooldown period after a respawn. The movement isn't even the toughest thing to get to grips with. Your firepower is governed by your inertia, too. You fire in the direction and at the speed that you're moving. This, of course, means that you need to be flying towards enemies in order to shoot them. You don't need me to tell you how hard this is, I'm sure you can imagine. Death is quite common, which is possibly why you get so many extra lives in Crystal Quest. You pick them up without noticing. Don't think this will help a great deal, though. What's more helpful is the abundance of the smart bombs. With shooting being so tricky, I rarely even tried it, instead focusing on my collection quest and dropping a bomb if it got a little too overwhelming. You'll pick up two or three on each wave anyway, and if you're astute, it doesn't take that many to save your bacon. There are lots of different enemies with varying movement and attack patterns. Some can be shot, but not all. Some explode on death, leaving a fiery blast radius that you need to avoid. As well as this, there are mines that cannot be taken out, but of course are death upon contact. As long as you can get the movement down, then they shouldn't trouble you too much. The biggest source of cheap deaths is trying to collect a crystal that's over one of the enemy portals. There's an awfully good chance that something will spawn just as you're picking it up, leaving absolutely no time to dodge. There's no telegraph that something's coming either, you're done. It feels really cheap every time it happens. In the end, I resorted to flying across the doorway at full speed and activating a bomb just as I crossed it. It works sometimes, but other times you just fly into something else anyway. Waves progress quickly, with a time bonus for quick completion. You can get through them in a handful of seconds. I don't know how many there are, but I've hit wave 70 or something. Enemies get more varied and mines more abundant. Other difficulties crop up too, such as your exit door moving at faster and faster speeds, meaning just leaving a stage becomes a challenge. This game suffers on the original Game Boy from a really bad shadowing, to the point where playing it becomes harder because of the hardware itself. It's just too fast. The blurring is non-stop, and because of the pixel-perfect collision detection, presents a really unappealing prospect. Put it in your Game Boy Advance or something, or else expect pain. The graphics themselves aren't too bad though, even if everything is minuscule. It's easy enough to differentiate between collectibles and things that'll kill you, and the level of sprite animation is quite impressive for so small a bunch of characters. The music is non-existent though. Instead, we get decent shooting and explosion sound effects, as well as the noises when crystals are collected. I'm not sure what that level completion sound is supposed to be, however. It's a sort of mildly orgasmic groan. It makes me a smidge uncomfortable for some reason. All in all, this is reasonably good fun. Despite the apparent toughness, the game is generous enough to let you progress. Give it a whirl. Thank <laughs> you.
Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or, alternatively, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.